Defining an underrated title can be tough, as some games review well without lighting sales charts on fire, and others are underappreciated in the critical sense. There are also titles which remain under the radar due to the lack of marketing budgets, but survive thanks to the word of mouth. So let's take a look at 15 of these games in the single player space and talk about what makes them special. Next Machina. Housemark, better known for the arcade shooter Rezogun, released an arguably superior follow-up in Next Machina. The latter is more of a top-down shooter akin to Robotron and Smash TV and had Eugene Jarvis, who designed both, as a consultant. The result was an intense, action-packed arcade title with heaps of particle effects, great bosses, and excellent areas. Unfortunately, Next Machina and Housemark's other arcade title, Matterfall, reaped so little success that the developer proclaimed the arcade genre dead and focused on more mainstream genres. Alice Madness Returns American McGee's Alice wasn't the be-all, end-all psychological horror renaissance, but it was still a nice visit to the twisted wonderland with great combat. Alice Madness Returns didn't quite capture the enthusiasm amongst critics due to its level design and gameplay. However, it's still recognized as a worthy sequel with an even darker story, a corrupted wonderland full of new foes and new mechanics like Hysteria and the Shrinking Potion. Blazing Chrome Need a real Contra revival after last year's terrible Rogue Corps? Joy Masher's Blazing Chrome is just what the doctor ordered. It has nearly everything, a post-apocalyptic setting, 16-bit graphics with stellar animation and backgrounds, challenging bosses, vehicle sections, and the list goes on. The only real trade-off is the length, though there are unlockable characters and higher difficulties available. Blazing Chrome has been seemingly forgotten despite launching in July of 2019, but it's well worth the price. The Evil Within 2 Sequels to established horror franchises not finding any takers isn't necessarily a new trend, but something about The Evil Within 2 not getting the appreciation it deserved stuck out over the years, especially with regards to sales. The game controls better than its predecessor, offers a more expansive world to explore, and packs some of the most terrifying monstrosities in gaming. A subsequent update even added full first-person support, turning the game into a thrilling first-person shooter as well. Binary Domain Developed by Ryu Gagotoku Studio of Yakuza fame, Binary Domain sold a whopping 20,000 units in two months. Multiplayer is a wash. The innovative AI didn't quite pan out, and the Jigsaw-style stat system was weird to say the least, but it's still a solid third-person shooter. One of the coolest parts of the campaign was the consequence system, where the player's interactions with their team would influence how they behaved. This could lead to them acting differently around the player in combat and even affecting the ending. Remember Me Before Don't Nod became the de facto Life is Strange studio, it presented something completely different. An action-adventure title with combo customization and a focus on altering and stealing memories. Despite selling 1 million copies, Remember Me wasn't the most polished experience and was criticized for its storytelling, characterization, and exploration. Nevertheless, the aesthetic and overall gameplay mechanics were interesting and helped elevate it above your usual action drivel. Vampire After making Life is Strange, Don't Nod had a separate team work on an action RPG called Vampire. The plot saw Jonathan Reed, a doctor in London during the Spanish flu, turned into a vampire. From there, the player could choose to feed on any NPC or, alternatively, kill no one. It's a balancing act between staying underpowered or going wild and feasting which could cause long-standing consequences for the city. Overall, Vampire sold 1 million copies despite average reviews and offers quite an enthralling tale despite some performance issues and middling combat. Deus Ex Mankind Divided Mid-criticism of its bugs and performance, not to mention the augment your pre-order controversy, Eidos Montreal's Deus Ex Mankind Divided just didn't click. It's a shame because despite the cliffhanger-esque ending, the world was full of awesome details, excellently designed side quests, multiple ways to play, and much more. Overrated for some, a diamond in the rough for others, Mankind Divided is still a worthwhile title. Condemned Criminal Origins Condemned Criminal Origins was a first-person title but focused more on brutal melee combat. Players would control FBI agent Ethan Thomas and investigate crime scenes while on the trail of serial killer X. However, various horrific occurrences and hallucinations also cropped up along the way. Despite its overall story, Condemned made enough of an impact to receive a sequel, Condemned 2 Bloodshot, before being relegated to history. 
Gravity Rush 2. The follow-up to Sony's equally underrated Gravity Rush, Gravity Rush 2 offers a larger world, more missions, and even more gravity styles for protagonist Cat to experiment with. Then there's the addition of Raven as an AI partner in Battles, who becomes playable in the free story DLC that was released later. As an easygoing platformer, Gravity Rush 2 seemed like a winner for the PS4 players. However, it only sold around 102,000 copies in Japan in its first month, with worldwide sales not being officially revealed. Mirror's Edge Remember the days when Electronic Arts started pushing new properties and IPs? Well, Mirror's Edge was one of them, and immediately stood out for its incredible visuals and first-person parkour. Despite the length, linearity, and minimal story, it was still praised for delivering a compelling first-person platforming experience. Sales were a different story, though. Released in November of 2008, it was projected to sell 3 million units by February of 2009, but only sold 1 million. It did end up getting a sequel in Mirror's Edge Catalyst, but the less said about that, the better. Shadows of the Damned Grasshopper Manufacture has always been known for its outlandish action titles, and Shadow of the Damned is no exception. Behind the innuendo was some genuinely awesome boss battles, level design, and zany humor. Puzzles focused on clearing darkness, and side-scrolling sections added more variety to protagonist Garcia's insane trip into the underworld. Sadly, the game only sold 24,000 copies in the first month in the US, and less than 10,000 copies in Japan. Mo Astray Oftentimes an unknown title will appear on Steam, slowly but surely gaining support among those who decide to dive in. Archprey's Mo Astray is one such title, with its gorgeous pixel graphics and difficult platforming. The gameplay is pretty unique, as protagonist Mo can stick to obstacles and enemies to navigate levels. It's telling that despite its lack of marketing, Mo Astray has still managed to garner a healthy amount of positive user reviews. Ico Despite Shadow of the Colossus being so incredible and The Last Guardian garnering so much hype, the first title by Sony Japan Studio and Team Ico titled, well, Ico, was very underrated. The story was presented in minimalist fashion, as the demon boy Ico struggled to save Yorda from the Queen's nefarious plans. Its initial launch in 2001 wasn't great, and even despite more awareness over the years, it only hit 700,000 units sold by 2009. However, thanks to its gorgeous aesthetics and animation, Ico is still considered an artistic masterpiece. Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem While the Nintendo GameCube is remembered for horror classics, there was one cult classic that fans still swear by to this day. Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem was touted as a psychological horror title unlike any other. This was due to its sanity effects that occurred whenever characters were under duress, like threatening to delete one's saved games. Aside from this, Eternal Darkness was heavily praised for its epic storytelling and characterization. Sales sadly did not reflect this enthusiasm, with less than half a million sold, but it's still a masterpiece of horror. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.